So on to lesson two of memory and on to lesson two of doing it in a recorded way. Uh, so hopefully it's still working well. Uh, let me know. We'll keep going with it for a couple of weeks. And if, if we don't like it, we'll revert back. But hopefully it's working well. We'll see. So what will you will need for today's lesson? You will need well, however you're doing your notes, whether that be you printed the booklet, whether that be you're typing into the booklet or you are doing it on a notepad and writing the page numbers in uh, and that will be transferred in later on in the year when we're back into college. Uh, you'll need that. You'll also need a piece of paper uh, and a pen. If you're doing it type, you'll, you will need a pen to write notes on the side. So that'll be like our starter. We're going to do a little experiment uh, and then we're going to do some exam questions at the end. Uh, so you will need to uh, have those to hand. So make sure you've got them before we get into the lesson. Um, also, we will be doing having to pause it so you can write things down. Uh, I'll let you know when that is though. So last lesson, uh, we did the coding capacity of short term memory and long term memory. Uh, we also need to do durations. That is our task today. Um, our starter is quick fire questions on coding and capacity. It shouldn't take long. A couple of word answers maximum. Note them down and then I want you to check them with your notes to make sure you're comfortable with them. So the questions are. Who conducted research into coding? Who conducted research into chunking? What is the capacity of the long term memory? How is short term memory coded? Who did research on the capacity of short term memory? And how is long term memory coded? Quick fire, pause it here, couple of minutes tops, check it with your notes. So you should hopefully have got most of those right. Um, it's really important that you remember these studies. Uh, it will also help you a lot next week when we go on to models of memory. Uh, so make sure you're very comfortable with them. Uh, but today we need to do duration. That's the last one we need to do. So, so duration, pretty self-explanatory. The length of time information can be held in any store. Now, when a memory goes into your head, for example, um, your brain will automatically try to keep rehearsing it. So saying it over and over again or thinking about it over and over again. And that's how it gets put into your long term memory. So to be able to study the duration of short term memory, we have to stop people being able to rehearse it. Yeah, and there's a few ways we can do it, but we're going to do it in our next experiment. So you need a scrap piece of paper. I'll do the timings for you. So we're going to do three conditions. Each condition is pretty much going to be exactly the same, but a different length of time. Different things you have to remember. Yeah, what you're going to do is I'm going to give you a trigram. Now a trigram is just three consonant letters put together that doesn't make sense. Then I'm going to ask you to count backwards from a certain number in threes. That's to stop you rehearsing. So I'll time you for a certain amount of time. I want you to look away from the computer. I know it's hard but try and test yourself. Look away from the computer, write it down. So don't be looking at the screen. I'll time it for you. Shut your eyes, something like that. So first one. I need you to count backwards in threes from 100 for six seconds. Now I'll tell you when to stop. The trigram I need you to try to remember is ZLG. Now start counting backwards from 100 in threes now. 100, 97, 94. Stop. Write it down. Try not to look. So it was ZLG. Did you get it? Give yourself a mark if you did. Next task, exactly the same procedure, a different number to count backwards from, a different trigram to remember. So the trigram you will need to be remembering is PQM and I want you to count backwards from 230 in threes for 12 seconds. You ready? Go. 230, 227, 224. Stop. Again, try without looking at the screen the whole time. Write it down. Should have been PQM. Did you get it? Give yourself a mark if you did. Last one. You should have noticed the trend by now. You're going to count backwards in threes from a different number for 18 seconds this time. Again, a different trigram. So get ready for it. You're going to need to count backwards in threes from 82, and the trigram is at VHJ. Go. 82, 79, 76. Stop.
stop. Should have had, if you write it down, should have been VHJ. Did you get it? That one should have been a lot more difficult. Now, have a look whether you got all three right. Got three out of three, well done. And if you're doing it properly, again, well done. It should have been very difficult to do condition three. That's because when you were counting backwards, that was stopping you rehearsing it. So that's how we test the duration of the short term memory. So as a statistic, I teach 34 of you. Most of you should have been able to complete condition one. So 28, 30 of you should have been able to do it. Half of you should have been able to do condition two. So I'm expecting 17 of you to have got that right. Now, condition three, only about four to six of you should have been able to do that. It, so make sure that you know why this is and that is because of the rehearsal being stopped now what i want you to have a bit of a think about you can pause it here to think how, what ways could we improve the methodology of this study not just doing it at home even if i was doing it in a lab study how could that be improved so have a bit of a think about what type of material i gave you what type of instructions you were given and what difficulties some people might have So should I should have had a little think. What we need to do is put this into practice for duration of short memory. That is pretty much the exact same procedure as Peterson and Peterson. It, they had nonsense trigrams like us. It, they were asked to recall them, but they had a few more intervals. I only did three conditions, they did six. So it's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, or eighteen seconds. Um, and then they were asked to count backwards in threes from any given number, and that was their interference task. After three seconds, participants could recall 80% of the time. After 18 seconds, only 10% were recalled correctly. So when rehearsal is prevented, very little can stay in the short term memory for, for longer than 18 seconds. So we say that the duration of short term memory is about around 18 seconds. That's the general given. In some places, you'll see it written as 18 to 30 seconds, both are right in because we don't have exact numbers uh, overall but this is the study we're going with so pause it here have a read through write it into your booklets for me please so that's short-term memory um how do we know the duration of long-term memory again there are a lot of issues when studying the long-term memory like there was with the capacity of it um there isn't a foolproof way to do it but there is methods that we can use. So we have got a study for this one, thankfully. So this is the study of Barak et al. in 1975. An American study, as usual. 392 people were asked to list the names of their ex-classmates. So that was a free recall test. They were then shown photos and asked to recall the names of the people. So a photo recognition test. Or they were given the names and asked to match them to the faces. So a name recognition test. Within 15 years of leaving school, the participants could recognise about 90% of the names and faces. And they were about 60% accurate on free recall of naming all the classmates. After 30 years, free recall declined to about 30% accuracy. And after 48 years, name recognition was still 80% accurate and photo recognition about 40% accurate. So this shows that in a real life setting um, that there is a large duration of long-term memory even though it does decline a little bit a bit of information is lost it fades away um it might just be that it's not that easy of access so the fact that they could name recognize 80 percent accurately after 48 years it shows that you might just need a little bit of prompting uh, now for this it's a field experiment it had high ecological validity it's a real life uh, so it's not like it was a made-up lab experiment Here's some made up people try to remember them 48 years later. These people had actual experiences. But we do need to take into consideration how this was stored. Were they in a lot of classes with them uh, and things like that? Each individual might be different. So that is just a little bit of consideration. Uh, but pause it here. This is your study for the duration of long term memory.
So you should have got a bit of evaluation from there for both pieces of research, but I've put a few hints below for you. Um, just make sure that you do include positives as well as, ne as, well as negatives. Uh, negatives are a lot easier to get because we're psychologists. We like to rip everything to shreds, uh, but we do need to make sure we've got the positives. So think about mundane realism. So how likely are you to do this in everyday life? Ecological validity, validity how much can we relate it? Uh, An explanatory power, does it make sense? It, so you need to make sure that you have got evaluations in those boxes if you haven't already. It, so pause it here if you need these hints, write them in. So I'm going to do a little bit of exam practice now. We've done the coding capacity duration um, and that's quite a lot of studies for you to take in in a week. Um, so your sort of homework between now and next week's lessons is going to be to revise and remember those studies. Believe me, the first lesson of next week, the more you know these studies, the easier it is. So make sure you are fully comfortable with them. Um, you'll need them for a lot of, the of other sections in memory. Uh, so four questions we're going to do, some shorter, some longer. Um, but for these questions, I'm going to show you the question. Um, I want you to time it because otherwise this video will end up being about three hours long. It won't, I'm joking. Um, but time yourself just so it's not a really long video to play and download and whatever. Um, so time yourself 1.5 minutes per mark. I'll tell you how long it should be. Yeah, so you'll need to pause and then time yourself writing the answer. I want you to stop um, when you've reached the time limit, even if you've not finished. And I want you to try and do it as much as you can without your notes. Yeah, just so you can have a bit of exam practice. That's what we'll be lacking in these times, real assessment. Um, so I'll show you then the mark scheme. I want you to mark it. If you've got a different coloured pen, that would be great. Yeah, and the, I'll want these scores sent to me, please, after this lesson. Um, so you, you don't you can send me your answers if you want to, and I'll have a brief look over, but I just need your score generally, please. So number one, read through the scenario. This is the six eight, four mark questions, six minutes. I want you to read through it. It's so investigation into memory, participants presented with two different lists, list A and list B. It, after seeing the list, participants were tested on their ability to recall the words. When they were tested immediately, participants found it more difficult to recall from list A in the correct order. When tested after 30 minutes, participants found it more difficult to recall the words from list B in the correct order. Use your knowledge of coding in memory to explain these findings. You need to make sure you link back to the list A and list B and reasons why. But four marks, six minutes, pause it and go. Right, mark scheme then. So it is all AO2, so all application. So you get one mark for each of the following bullet points. So it should be quite straightforward to mark. Don't need exact wording. So for the immediate task, list A is made up of words that are acoustically similar. I'd give an example there of two words that sound similar. This will cause confusion when tested immediately as short term memory uses acoustic based coding. That gets you the two marks. So it's a mark for each bullet point. But again, I just make sure you put example for list A. For the delayed task, list B is made up of words that are semantically similar. Give an example of two words. This will cause confusion when tested after 30 minutes as long term memory uses semantic coding. Mark for each bullet point on there, need to include all four for four marks. Don't need the exact same word in. Nice and straightforward one to mark for once. So, question number two then. Two marks, three minutes, nothing major. Outline the difference between capacity of short term memory and the capacity of long term memory. I'm going to emphasise the word difference. So pause it here, three minutes, go. So once three minutes are up, we need to mark it. So the key here is your wording. You need to directly compare them. So comparative language such as whereas, however, is vital. On the other hand, whatever you want. It, so we know how picky the examiners and me, mainly me, can be. Um, I just don't want you to get in a scenario where you get a really picky examiner and that you don't get the marks for one word. Because it, it literally will be one word difference. 
So for two marks, the capacity of long-term memory is much larger than short-term memory because there is an unlimited capacity of the long-term memory and in the short-term memory, it's seven plus or minus two items. You don't need to put the study in for seven plus or minus two, but you can if you want to put Jacobs in. Don't do it in detail, though. It's only two marks. So you'd only get one mark if you did the top one. You need to add in the capacities for the, to get the second mark, essentially. You can talk about chunking if you want to, but it is only two marks. So give yourself a mark for that one. Question number three. Four marks, six minutes. Describe one way in which psychologists have investigated the duration of short term memory. In your answer, you should include details of stimulus materials used, what participants were asked to do and how duration was measured. Be very specific is my advice. Pause it here. Six minutes. Go. So should have been Peterson and Peterson in a lot of detail is what you should have gone for. Um, because it says you have to include details of the stimulus, there are some requirements that you have to have. So in mark scheme, it's all knowledge for marks. It's likely that candidates will refer to the experiment by Peterson and Peterson. You have to make reference to the trigram for one mark. You then have to say rehearsal was prevented by asking them to count backwards in threes. So one mark, I'll give it a bit of a marking with my squift writing. So this gives you one mark. Mentioning the word Peterson and Peterson or the names Peterson and Peterson won't get you a mark on its own. For two mark, the second mark, you need to say how rehearsal was prevented by asking them to count backwards. For third mark, they were timed. Fourth mark, percentages. So make sure you've got those four in there. Doesn't need to be. Um, word for word how it is in your booklet or anything like that just need to make sure you've got the gist of those four things um it says at the bottom one mark for a brief answer for example reference to trigrams in a duration study uh, the three other marks come from um elaborating on it so explaining exactly how they did it um timing them what the time intervals were the percentages and the results and so on uh, but just make sure those four circles there that are a little bit squiffed you've got those in your answer then we're on to number four last question so nine minutes it's broken into two parts a little bit longer a case study was carried out on peter whose brain was damaged in a motorcycle accident psychologists tested how many numbers he could hold in his short-term memory they did this by reading him lists of numbers and asking him to recall those numbers immediately in the right order he could recall a maximum of two items the psychologist found that his long-term memory was normal a how was Peter's mem short term memory after the accident different from most adults short term memory for two marks and then identify one ethical issue associated with this case study of Peter suggest how psychologists could deal with this ethical issue for four marks. So altogether nine marks, generally speaking, three mark three minutes for A and six minutes for B, yeah, but nine minutes altogether for your marks. Pause it here, give them a go, use the scenario. So mark scheme then, for a application completely. Uh, so you get a mark for saying um, that Peter has only got two, um, a, a digit span of two. This is a lot smaller or shorter than that of a normal adult, which is seven plus or minus two. Um, the two marks come from the comparison, really. Uh, you'd only get one mark for saying that Peter's is much smaller. That would be one mark. Uh, but you need to put the numbers in. How is it different for the two? And then B, AO3. Um, there are a few different options you've got here. Um, the one mark you get for an identify, uh, so informed consent, right to withdraw, confidentiality are probably the ones that you've gone for. Uh, you could go for protection from harm ish, um, but that's a little bit iffy, mainly because um, protection from harm, you could we would usually say Peter might feel a little bit stupid or feel 
unhappy that he hasn't got a good memory um but because his memory is so short and he probably wouldn't remember how many you've got anyway um so that's a little bit of a funny one to word i'd steer clear of it um and examiners do think like that not just me so examples easiest ones informed consent rights with draw confidentiality you get one mark for that and then you get uh, one mark for a mention of how it could be dealt with and then elaborating on it so the example they've gone for is confidentiality would be one mark you could deal with it by keeping the man's details private for the second for example the psychologist should not use the man's name in published work will get you a third and then but you could use his initials instead will get you the fourth the same with uh, informed consent or right to withdraw you could say informed consent's an issue uh, you could have a designated carer or designated adult with him the psychologist should accept this as consent and accept the um, knowledge of peter knowing when he is upset and withdraw him from the study it's uh, something like that uh, but confidentiality is an easy one to get you for for these ones so now's a good time to take a break of that's lesson two. Um, lesson three of the week will be coming over the next day or two. It'll give you a bit of a pre one and it is to do with memory, but it is a revision lesson. Uh, so we are going to be doing some research methods, mainly the research methods we found difficult and we did around January, February time. Uh, so things like SKUs, distributions, statistical testing, everyone's favourite thing. Uh, so word of advice um, for that lesson, I would have your research methods booklet with you. Um, so everything pink that we've done probably also bring some chocolate to get you through doing stats testing on last lesson of the week as well that'd be a good idea uh, but make sure you're prepared it'll be exam questions it'll be revision i'll go through things with you step by step but see you next lesson